Our first presenter is Amy Williams. Dr. Williams has three degrees at the intersection of business and computers and has spent most of her adult life looking for creative ways to catch cyber criminals. Amy has balanced her exciting but high adrenaline career with painting, exercise, and a loose, informal style of meditation that she secretly and intuitively started practicing after getting what she calls a divine download as a young child. In September of 2019, she went to a formal meditation retreat to practice with the pros and got another, more formal, divine download on how to combine meditation and art in interesting ways that she believes might have an impact on her creativity and in all things, including her well-being. That's what she's here to talk about. Please welcome Amy. Every, li every living thing has an energetic vibration beyond what we see with our eyes. And if we could keep an energy field big and fluffy, the beauty that we could create is infinite. This is Buddy the Wonder Dog. He weighs 20 pounds and his spirit is massive. The secret to his success, he never wastes time reflecting on his crappy childhood or making New Year's resolutions. He is just in the moment looking for joy. We are all designed to feel good, to channel high vibration energy and create beautiful things. This is a real dragonfly on a flower in the moonlight. The scene is high vibration. The photographer channeled those vibrations and it lifts my frequency just looking at it. The creative process isn't limited to making things called art. A well-crafted joke, spontaneous dancing, I heard some Zumba screamers, <laughs> and a beautifully presented nourishing meal are all forms of high vibrational creativity. Channeling high, uh, higher frequencies simply requires us to be calm and open to the possibilities. Toward that end, I hope you'll play along with me and take a deep breath right now. Take another one and soften your focus and stare into the blackness here and imagine what you could create if you had no limitations at all on your creative abilities. And stay with that feeling and maybe breathe it in again. And now continue focusing on your dream creation and how it makes you feel as you stare into this colorful fractal with soft focus. Make yourself as big as possible and really enjoy that feeling. Get into the joy of it. And now think about how you'd feel when you go to sell what you created. Did you feel the shift? Being creative is a boundless, divergent process that we often cut short in the process and zero in on something convergent. And we target things that are measurable and socially rewarding instead of feeding our souls. Also, convergent focus is easier because it usually starts with a tangible, like a lack of wealth or an abundance of sickness. And we actually meditate on that, literally shrinking our fields and causing us dis-ease to the point of disease. I went to a meditation retreat at Niagara Falls in September with Dr. Joe Dispenza. I had no thoughts of how meditation related to art when I went, but the entire time I kept getting whispers from the universe that I needed to explore this relationship. This is the Pecha Kucha size version of what is now one of my new obsessions. Several days started with walking meditations as early as 4 a.m. These were key to forming the thoughts that I'm sharing with you now. There were 1,800 of us, and we walked around the falls listening to guided meditations, stopping at regular intervals to close our eyes and meditate. We heard later that some locals reported us as cult members and zombies, but we, we really didn't care. These three women came together from Colombia. This picture was taken on the last day of the workshop. The woman in the middle had leukemia, and on day one she arrived wearing a mask, no makeup. She was hunched over a walker and looked completely lifeless. She was definitely vibrating on a higher frequency by the end of the workshop. The night before this meditation, I asked the universe to tell me whether these inspirations regarding meditation and color ideas were divine gifts or not. I closed my eyes in the dark during the next meditation shown here, and when I opened them, the sun was coming up, a rainbow was shooting out of a pink mist over iridescent green water, and I got the sign, and that's why I'm here. <laughs> this shows our nerve centers, which loosely align with our energy centers. Each center has a different job, but they all share fluid that runs through your spine and responds to your active breathing. 
This is scientifically 100% physically accurate. It's also why meditation can change your health. To repeat, there's scientific proof that meditation changes people's health. Tonight I'm sharing the most practical version of the color and meditation manifestations which anyone can practice. The next seven slides show objects related to the colors associated with each energy center. And you can find that info, info online. So as the colors go by, I'm going to talk about um, the idea for removing blocks and increasing energy flow. The first center is around the perineum and associated color is red. The second is your gut below your navel, which is orange. The third is of your stomach is yellow. Fourth is your heart. That's green, and this is where the flow of energy switches from survival mode to living with purpose. The fifth is your throat, which is blue. The sixth is your pineal gland. The seventh is your crown center. And there's actually an eighth one above your head, 16 inches, but I won't go into that. <laughs> the whole goal is to keep good energy flowing freely, no matter what you're facing. All centers are like radio receivers, and stress is like wrapping tin foil around them. All blocks to our nerve centers move around. So in other words, different people are uh, more inclined to get different blocks in different places and different situations make you blocked in different ways. Wow, I really feel that badly in my gut. It broke my heart. I felt in the situation that I just couldn't speak my truth. Those are all actually physical reactions. So here's the idea. Full-on meditation is great, but when you don't have an hour to spend with Dr. Joe, this might help. And if you aren't in a meditative practice, this might seem less overwhelming as well. Um, plus, just noticing which centers are wacky is, is, a, is a useful starting point. So let's say you start to pay more attention to how your body responds to your mother-in-law. If you specifically feel tightness in your stomach, then you can that you can plan to wear a gold bracelet to focus on that while mentally feeling your stomach and talking to your stomach and telling it that you're grateful for it. Tell your stomach how much you love it and tell it that it shouldn't take your mother-in-law so seriously while you play with a gold bracelet. This makes it playful and if you talk to your stomach like a friend it will respond like a friend and then the blocks will disappear. So that's the Pecha Kucha size version of one of the few different color and meditation ideas that I'm playing with. I really like this one in particular because I'm not painting a lot right now, um, but I also really love my cybersecurity job. Right now my team is working to protect our national election systems from foreign interference and helping suppliers to the Department of Defense protect their data from international theft. It's truly a full-time creative practice, and my meditation and color ideas are helping me be better at that. So you could be better at anything with color meditations. <laughs> in closing, I'd like to say that we have no idea how powerful we are in our ability to heal ourselves and the world around us. We need to dream bigger and live up to those dreams. Namaste.